uh, that you will enjoy the word that is, will be brought forth today. Um, you know, uh, it's always a privilege and an honor to, to be able to speak God's word to you. Uh, we, we love you. We want to just say thank you for all your, your tithe and your offerings and, and all that you do for Fountains of Living Water so that the word will continue going out. Amen. <clears throat> I just want to pray for for the tithe and the offering right now um, and, uh, uh, and, and pray for you as well. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you have provided in abundance, Father. We thank you, Father, that, Lord, that your people trust you, your, your children trust you, Father God, and that's why they have tithe and that's why they give offering, Lord, because they know that their life is in your hand, Father, and they know that you will continue to provide. Father, we thank you because there's none other like you, Father. We thank you for their health, Lord. Lord, we thank you that, Lord, anybody sick, Father, could receive healing. We thank you, Father, right now that as they put their trust in you, Father, and only believe, Father, that healing is quick to come. Father, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, again for, for the tithe and the offerings, Father, for we know that it is a sign and, and symbolic of trusting in you, Father, faith in you. So, Father, right now, I thank you for the blessing. I thank you for jobs, Lord. I thank you. I thank you for, for prosperity, Father, in the lives of, the, of your children. Father, we thank you that through all this craziness that's going on around us, Father God, we thank you, Lord, that we can still prosper, that we can still be in health, that we can still experience joy and peace and love, Father. We thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> Well, I'd like to, I'd like to uh, uh, take you into the scriptures at this time. I want to speak to you about matters of the heart. You know, a, a, whole, lot of us, a whole lot of us, you know, we, we don't really realize that the things that we allow to settle in our hearts and, and, to, uh, and, to, and, 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 and to stay there, you know, uh, does, you know, either it, it's either going to come out in blessing or it's going to, you know, if it's something negative, it's going to come out, you know, in, in something bad, you know, but... Um, let me just say, folks, um, I, this is why one of the reasons why I, I always try to practice to, to, to be quick to forgive, you know, because I don't want anything to, 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 to harbor in my heart because I understand what, that when bad feelings, when feelings of resentment and feelings of unforgiveness stay there, it turns to bitterness. Now, listen, listen, listen to what I'm saying. It turns to bitterness. It turns bitterness is nothing more than a poison that we allow to settle in our hearts. And 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 folks, you know, the the, the bottom line is is that anybody that 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 knows about bitterness and hate understands that you know it's it's a poison that 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 we take in and we expect harm to come on other people. You know, and and those people walk away and and never even have a notion of what they've done at times. You know, so I'm talking to you about matters of the heart. But listen to what it says. We're going to start, we're going to start reading in verse, uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. It says, My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ears unto my sayings. You know, it, it, li listen to that right away. It says, My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ears unto my sayings. In other words, let this be what settles in your heart. Listen to what I've said in my word. Listen to what I'm talking about. And let this be the thing that settles in your heart. Amen. It says, let them not depart from thine eyes. Amen. You know, I love this because really what it's telling us here, it, it says, let them not depart from your, from your eyes. In other words, let this be your focal point. You know, when there's resentment and unforgiveness in your heart, that's all you focus on. Have you ever, have you ever been hurt by somebody and, 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 and that person really kind of hurt you? And, and, and so, you know, they, they, they've, caused, they've caused offense and, and you let the offense set. Listen, folks, the only thing, it seems like the only thing that you can focus on is, is the hurt. The only thing that you can focus on is what you're going through. And, and listen to what it says. It says, it says, let them not depart from your eyes. Let his word not depart from your eyes. Because, folks, it is so easy, you know, to get caught up with what's going on in this world and to get caught up in what's going, you, you, you going on around us and you know, we just, we, we, uh, we, 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 
we we had a, have a newly elected president and and you know but right before that you know there was there was there was common people you know de, you know just debating and getting into strong I'm I'm not going to say arguments strong disagreements over the over the matter and and the reality is is that you know I, I see I I seen you know many people I can say a nation that 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 listen that that just began to 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 have really bad ill feelings towards one another and that's wrong why because many people had and, and I'm talking about Christian people I'm talking about people that knew that know Jesus and they let listen they let his word depart from their eyes. It says, let them not depart from rise. Amen. Listen, let me go back and read again. It says, my son, attend to my words. Don't attend to the words of, of, of what people are saying around you. Don't, don't, don't. Listen, people are always going to talk crazy. And people are always going to are always going to cause offense. But listen to what it says. My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my saying. He's saying, you know what, sometimes, and let me just say this, folks, sometimes in order to guard your heart, you got to tune people out. Amen. You got to know when it's okay, you know, to listen to people and you got to know when, you know what, I, I, I can't be hearing this, you know, you, 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 you know. This is too much. And you got to know when you need to separate yourself, because if you don't, then that same, listen, that same bitterness, that same anger, that same resentment or whatever that they're feeling is going to begin to, to try and settle itself in your heart. And so sometimes you got to just, you know, no, I, I need to attend to God's word. I need to incline my ear into his say. What does God's word say? What is God saying to me? Amen. And a lot of times we, we do well in just doing that because the reality is, is that folks, everybody has an opinion and everybody has their own, their own thought process and they may not agree with yours, you know, or, or they could just be very negative people. Amen. And let me put it to you like this, hanging around negative people will weigh you down. I don't care how strong you are. I don't care how mentally strong you are. If you hang around a person that has always got a negative attitude, it will weigh you down. It will weigh on your heart. And sooner or later, you begin to take the same attitude and the same characteristics of that person. This is why he says, my son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my saying. Amen. Verse 21 says, let them not depart from your eyes. In other words, let this be your focal point. When, you know, because obviously there's times when you can't. I mean, you just can't. You can't get away from, from all the talks and everything. I mean, you know, I, you, you can't pick up your phone without an alarm, uh, an alert going on of some breaking news, you know, and it's 90% uh, of it is garbage. 90% of it is trash. You understand? But they call it breaking news, and, and and you can't hardly pick up you know your phone without seeing that. You can't you know turn on the television without seeing it, and, and 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 so you have to make a conscious effort. Listen to not let God's word depart from your eyes. You know, um, the other day my wife was telling me that, you know that 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 Walmart was out of toilet tissue again, and you know, she said you know it's crazy because. You know, you walk, you walked into Walmart and people were just scurrying out, you know, with 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 carts loaded with 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 toilet tissue. Why? Because, listen, they were inclining their ears to somebody else's saying again. And they and they were and they had let God's word depart from their eyes. It says keep them. Here we go. Keep them. In, keep what? Keep God's word in the midst of your heart. Amen. Keep God's word in the midst of your heart. Now, it, it, you, you, you understand why? Because God's word is going to strengthen you. God's word, the strong spirit of a man will sustain him in trouble. Now, let me put it to you like this. The strong spirit of a man comes from knowing God's word, comes from keeping God's word. Folks, listen, folks, and, and I'm going to say this and I'm going to be bold about saying this. It doesn't matter how much of God's word, you know. It really doesn't matter how much of God's word you know if you're not keeping your eyes focused on it. If, you know, and, and let me say this because it's happened in my own life. You know, 
I, I, I let things get to me. And, and generally when things get to me is because I've taken my eyes off of God's word, you know, at times, you know, and, and so then I, I listen. So then somebody comes and tells me, tells me something about God's word. And they, you know, they try to, they try to encourage me with God's word. And, and it, I know that, I know that, you know, then if I knew it, then why did, why am I, why am, am I going through this? And it's because I've taken my eyes off of God's word. You know, the Bible, the, the Psalm says like this, I lift up my eyes unto the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from Jehovah, maker of heaven and earth. I lift up what? I lift up my eyes unto the Lord. I lift up my eyes unto his word. Why? Because everything else is, it, it, you understand? But, but you have to understand, I know God's word. And so my automatic response should be that I respond according to God's word. But because I have taken my eyes off of it, listen, I've taken my eyes off of it. Something else has been settling in my heart. I've been keeping something else in my heart. And so now my response no longer comes from God's word that I've kept in the midst of my heart, but rather from, from what I've allowed to come into my heart. You understand? We have many people, you know, it hurts me. It really, truly hurts me that I see people, good people. And, and you got to understand, I, I, I always look for the good in people. But I, 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 I see good people, sometimes good Christian people, you know, and they are so full of bitterness and hate and resentment and hurt. You know, let me put it to you this way, folks. If you allow hurt to, to, to settle in your heart, it won't be long before it turns into bitterness. And bitterness is a sour cup of drink to swallow. It's a sour cup. You understand. And so you got to understand that, that many times when we allow that, that, that hurt, and, and I'm not saying that you have no reason to hurt, but if you let it settle, it's going to turn into bitterness. And that bitterness will begin to form your character. I know people, and, and, and that character generally, generally manifests itself in a lot of hate. You say, man, that person is really hateful. You know, I, 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 I've learned that, you know, I see past it and I see it's bitterness. And the bitterness is because somebody caused a great deal of hurt. And that great deal of hurt, you know, was what turned into that bitterness, which manifested itself out in hate. You understand? And so let me just tell you, folks, but when you keep God's word in the midst of your heart, hurt, I'm not telling you that you, you're not going to get hurt. I'm telling you, it'll be so much easier to release that hurt. When you make a conscious decision to keep your eyes focused on God's word, to, you know, to not let them depart from your eyes, I'm telling you, it's going to be so much easier to, to release that hurt and, and it won't turn into bitterness because the bottom line is, is that we have to understand that everything we everything we allow to settle in our hearts will have an effect on our lives. Oh, that was good. Let me say it again. Everything that we allow to settle in our hearts will take its effect on our lives. There is no such thing as, oh, that, does, that, 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 that didn't bother me. No, it, listen, if it didn't bother you, it's because you didn't allow it to settle in your heart. But there's nothing that you allow to settle in your heart that is not going to take an effect on your life. If it's joy, peace, love, you know, goodness and mercy, if you allow that to settle in your heart, then it's going to take a very positive effect. You know, listen. And it's going to manifest itself in health. It's going to manifest itself in prosperity. You say, well, how's it going to manifest itself in health and prosperity? Listen, folks, when people see you, they'll want to be a blessing to you. When people see you, they'll naturally be attracted to you to help you carry out the things that you're trying to do. When people, listen, it's going to manifest in health. Why? Because there is no bitterness. Bitterness, it's that poison, that, it's that sour cup that we've drank. And it brings sickness with it and it brings disease. But when you allow love, joy and peace and you keep that in the midst of your heart, then it manifests itself in health. Amen. Who glory to God. You understand. Whatever you allow to settle in your heart will have an effect on your life. The question is, what are you allowing to keep in the midst of your heart? Listen, is it God's word? Is it God's love? Is it God's joy? Is it God's peace? 
or listen, or is it what the world has been feeding? Is it what's been going around in the world? Is it what people's done to you? Is it what perhaps your children have done to you? Listen, if you allow that to settle in the midst of your heart, then I promise you that what's going to come out is something that you that you definitely do not desire to have. You understand, listen, I, I, I say this, you know, uh, this is one of the reasons why I refuse to allow hurt to, to settle in my heart. Hurt is a very dangerous thing for you to allow to settle in your heart. Let me tell you why. <clears throat> when you allow hurt to settle in your heart, again, it becomes bitterness. And that bitterness begins to manifest in, in, in fits of rage and anger and hate. And, and you need to understand that it's not only going to come towards the person that caused the hate. Generally, they're the ones that are going to, to, to receive a very minimal part of what you're going to manifest. Amen. They're, they're the, the people that cause that deep hurt in your life are going to receive very little of the manifestation of the bitterness that you that 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 hurt has turned into in your heart. But listen, those that are the closest around you, those that are those that you love with all your heart and that you would never dream of hurting, that you would never dream of them leaving you because of something you've done or something you said. Those are the ones that are going to reap the harvest of what somebody else did who went on with their own life. Now, to me, I don't know about you, but to me, that seems pretty, pretty foolish. Amen. To allow to allow somebody to 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 come into my life, hurt me and then leave leave my life and leave me with that hurt and me allowed to me keep hold of that hurt because I have the right to hurt. I'm human. And yes, you are. And you do have the right. But is it worth losing everything that you love that's around you? Because generally when that we allow that hurt to settle, it turns into hate. And I'm, I mean, it turns into bitterness and bitterness manifests itself in anger and in hate. And it generally it's not the person that caused the hurt initially that receives the 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 the. the the harvest of of what of the of the of what that hurt caused is generally the people you love, like your children, like your spouse, like like you know your your loved relatives, your loved friends. Those are the people that are generally the recipients of all the hurt and the bitterness that we allow to settle. I, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. When God gave me that revelation, I said, "I'm going to forgive, and I'm going to forgive quickly." And let me put it to you like this. The easiest time to forgive is if you can forgive the moment that the harm was done to you, the moment that the hurt was, 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 was caused, listen, you are going to be so much better off. Why? Because there's no chance of any bitterness to, 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 have been, to have been created. Amen. Keep them in the midst of their hearts. What are, what are you keeping in the midst of your heart? What, are, what is it that you're allowing to, to settle in your heart? Amen. Let me put it to like this. I said, if if you keep God's word, if you keep God's joy, if you keep God's love, you know, uh, we, we, we don't we don't use this term so much anymore uh, uh, like we used to. But we used to use this term a lot. I'm going to walk in love. And it doesn't matter what people say. I'm going to walk in love for love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not self-seeking. Love is not puffed up. You understand? Listen, this is love and I'm going to walk in that. This is what love is and I'm going to walk in that and I'm going to hide that. I'm going to bury that in the midst. I'm going to keep that in the midst to keep it, you know, to preserve it, to, to make sure that, it, that, 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 that nothing else could come in except that love, joy, peace. And, and, and I'm going to keep it in the midst of my heart. I'm going to guard it in the midst of my heart. Why? Because it's going to produce a fruit. It's going to produce a very desirable fruit. When you allow hurt, it, it, it produces undesirable fruit. But when you allow love to settle in your heart, listen to what I'm saying, folks. I'm preaching myself happy. If you ain't gotten happy yet, I'm preaching myself happy. Why? Because when I, when I think about this, and I think about the love and the joy just from making a conscious decision that I am going to walk in love regardless of what's going on around me, regardless of what people say about me, regardless of how much hurt people have tried to cause me. Listen, I'm going to walk in love. 
And as I make that decision to walk in love, listen, and I keep love in the midst of my heart and I keep joy in the midst of my heart and I keep, listen, what is the byproduct of joy? It, it, it's laughter, it's happiness, it's, 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 it's everything that's positive. What is the byproduct of love? You know, when, you, when you're full of love, people love you back. Why? Because you're oozing love out towards them. What is the byproduct of peace? You know, that, that there is no stress. There is, there's nothing, you understand. And what am I saying? That when you guard this in the midst of your heart, then what it's going to produce is a very desirable harvest. And people will look at you and say, man, what are you so happy about? Man, why, you know, man, you're just so lively. You know, to the point when you that when you do need a job or something, people will just look at you and say, you know what, I, I need you to come work for me. I want you to come work for me. You understand what am I saying? That all of a sudden, because you've kept God's word, you've kept God's love, you kept God in the midst of your heart, everything else becomes desirable. And, pe you know, I tell people all the time, you know, fix the God in you. And I'm not saying fix God because you can't fix God, but fix, you know, fix the God, the, 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 the uh, how do I say it? The priority in you, God first in me, you understand? Then everything else. Listen, I, I was talking to a gentleman that, that you know, that he was going through a divorce at one time. And, and I said, you know what, bro? I said, I'm going to be very honest with you. I said, I said, uh, when you make, when you, when you truly let God make you the man of God that he wants you to be, I said, there's going to be plenty of people that find you attractive. There's going to be, because he was telling me, I feel alone. I feel like there's nobody there for me. And I told him this. I said, when you allow God to make you the man that he wants you to be, I said, you're going to be attractive to all people. I said, I, I, I rarely have problems, you know, with friends. As a matter of fact, in my business, one of the biggest one of the biggest issues with me in my business is that every customer I have are close friends. Amen. And, and I always spend more time with 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 them than what I than what I should, you know, because I, I, I have a business to run. But you understand, what does it come from? It comes from simply listen, it comes from simply having love, joy, peace that people that know very little about me want to know more about me. What are you producing? What's coming out? Listen, it says, let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. Listen, for they are, they are life unto those that find them. What? God's word, God's love, God's joy, God's peace. They are life to those that find them. This is what's supposed to be coming out of your heart. This is what's supposed to be coming forth. You know what? Life. Listen, when you got God in, in your heart and you got God's word in your heart, then you're going to produce life. And anybody that is producing life is going to be attractive. Anybody is, I'm just, I'm just, and I'm not saying attractive in a, in a malicious way or, 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 or attractive in a, in a, in the wrong sense. I'm going to, I'm saying people are going to be attracted to you. They're going to, listen, they're going to want to help do what you're doing. They're going to want to be around what you're doing. They're going to be, want to be a part of what you're doing. Why? Because they find you attractive. And, and we call it, what do we call it? We call it charisma. Oh, that person has great charisma. No, that person has God and God's word hidden in their hearts. And they are life unto those that find them. And they are health to all their flesh. Amen. God's word, hiding God's word. You know, so you know what this tells me? That when I hide hurt and bitterness and resentment in my heart, guess what's going to manifest? Sickness, you know, achy joints. You know, there's nothing more, there's nothing that hurts the body, hurts the joints. Let me say it like that. Hurts your joints more than going through a depression. Amen. Listen, you may have arthritis in your elbow and it's going to hurt your elbow. You may have, you know, tendonitis in your wrist and it's going to hurt you. But when you have depression, your whole body hurts. Your whole body aches. It's not one part. It's not one member of the body. It's the whole body. And when you hide bitterness and, and listen, you are you are walking yourself into a depression and it does not produce health. It produces it, it produces a lot of aches and pains, a lot of poor health, you know. And folks, you may not believe it, but I have literally seen people die from bitterness. I've watched people die. 
And I knew in my heart that if I could only get them to just release all their hurt, get rid of all the bitterness and allow the joy of the Lord, which is their strength to settle into their heart, I knew that I would be able to help them live. And unfortunately, I can honestly tell you that I watched some die. Amen. Why? Because they weren't able to, 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 to find them. Listen, it says, for they are life unto those that find them and they are health to all their flesh. Now listen to what it says. We're, I'm going to go back. You don't have to go back. I'm just going to go back. My son, attend to my words, incline thy ears unto my saying. Let them not depart from the eyes. Keep them in the midst of, of, the, of your heart. For they are life unto those that find them and health to, to all their flesh. Now go to verse 23 and look at what verse 23 says. Keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of, out of it, are the issues of life in other words out of your listen if you want to know why your life is going the way it's going check your heart why because out of your heart it, it, now you got to understand what this scripture is saying here and for years we've read it and we've read it and we've read it but we've not fully understood what it's saying it says keep your heart with all diligence for out of it out of the heart are the issues of life in other words whatever issues arise it's because of what you have in your heart whatever good things arise from your heart whatever arises that's good you know it's arising because of the good things that you have in your heart amen for listen it says keep your heart with all diligence what was he saying first first the the, the uh, um the author of, of, of the book of Proverbs says, My son, attend to my words, incline thy ears unto my saying. He saying, keep, he says, and then he says, Let them not depart. Keep your eyes on my word. He says, Let your ear only hear my word. Stop listening. And you're going to hear it, but stop listening to put to action everything that you're hearing around me. And then, he, and then he says, For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Amen. Hallelujah. What is it saying? That a lot of what's going on around us are because of issues that we have unresolved. And if we don't keep our... our and, and, but listen to what it says. Keep your heart with all diligence. So whatever is going to come forth, whatever comes... Whatever lifestyle we're living, whatever life we're living and, and whatever... Listen, you have a great deal to do with it. You say, oh, I have no control over what other people do. You have no control over what anybody else does except you. But only you have control over what you allow to affect you and settle in your heart. You may not have control over what anybody else does, but you have control over what you allow to settle in your heart. You have control over what you allow, how you allow other people to affect you. You may not be able to, to, to control how your spouse, how your children, how the world around you, how your friends, how your co-workers. You may not be able to, 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 to change or to, or, 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 or to, or, or to, you know, to, to do any, anything about what's going on around you. But you can, you have a lot to do with what's going on in you. And it says, keep your heart without diligence. Why? Because out of it are the issues of life. In other words, if I... If I'm, if I'm keeping God's word in my heart and I'm doing right, then out of my heart, there's going to come good things. You know why? Because I'm going to manifest good things. You say, oh, can I have a scripture for that? Absolutely. Go to Matthew chapter, chapter 34 and 35. It says, oh, generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You can always tell, let me say this, with this scripture, I'm, I just want to tell you this. You can always tell what's in a person's heart by how they talk. You can always tell. Listen to what the scripture is saying. Old generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? If there's evil in your heart, guess what you're going to speak? Evil things. Now, you may say, you know... You may think that evils are, you know, are dropping F-bombs and dropping B-bombs and all that. You know, those are vulgar words. But let me tell you the things that are, the, the things, things that God considers evil. Well, I don't know if they're going to make it or not. That's evil. You know what that tells me? 
There's a lot of unbelief there. And they may be a Christian that said that, but listen to what I'm saying. That's evil. And you can't, you can't, you can't speak forth a faith word. You can't speak words of faith if there's doubt and unbelief in your heart. Listen, oh, generation of viper, how can you be an evil? How can you being of unbelief speak faith? Amen. So you understand, if you really want to know what kind of, what, what, what the character of the person is, listen to them talk. Listen to, I, one of the things that I always, you know, and you got to understand because I, I have to guard myself, you know, about this because it's so easy to listen to everybody's problems. It's, as a pastor, it's so easy to, to hear a bunch of negative things. But I got to guard my heart. Listen, and, and there's times when I got to, you know, just when a person's being too negative, I got to push myself away. Why? Even if I like the person, even if they're a close friend or a close relative, I have to push myself away. Why? Because it's, it's too much negativity and it's going to begin to affect the way I'm trying to help those that are truly, you know, not being negative. They're just in a negative situation. Amen. And so I have to guard myself because then I take a negative attitude. And I don't want to be evil and, 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 and you know, because then I'm going to speak evil things. And, and I call that being evil, allowing, allowing, you know, just taking too much, taking more than more than what I'm able to, 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 to digest and to just flush out. I'm not even going to say digest, just to, just to sh shun away and push away and, and, and leave it alone. Leave it at the leave it at the altar, leave it in, in the prayer chamber, leave it. You, you understand? I, I you have to guard your heart. Oh, generation of vipers, how can you be an evil? Speak good things. If you want to know if the person is good or, or is evil or, or, or the type of character, listen to them talk a little bit. They're going to tell you whether they're positive people. That, I'm just going to say it like this. They're going to tell you whether they're optimistic people or they're pessimistic. You say, what's a pessimist? A pessimist is some, well, let me, uh, an optimist. Let me give you the definition of an optimist. An optimist is somebody who, who, who can have one thing out of 10 things going good. Just one thing. They say, but you know what? Praise God, nine things, all this junk is going bad around me, but I got this one thing. And they will cling to that one thing and they'll say, and God made this good thing happen for me and God will fix all the other nine. Amen. You say, well, what's a pessimist? A pessimist is a person that can have nine things out of ten going good, but they get so focused on the one thing that's going bad that they listen that they are willing to destroy the other nine or throw them away. Why? Because it's just not worth it if I can't have this. That's a pessimist. And let me tell you, when you run into a person like that, run. Get away from them. But they're my friends. That's okay. Let them be your friends at a distance. At a far distance. Visit them once in a while. Call them every, every so often just to say, how you doing? I still, I, still, you know, I still know who you are. But keep them far and pray for them. Listen. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Verse 35. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart. Remember, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it flow the issues of life. Listen, a good man out of, the, out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. When you keep God's word in your heart, when you keep, when you keep God's love in your heart, when you keep God's joy in your heart, when you keep God's peace in your heart, listen, out of your heart is going to flow good things. A good man. Out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. Remember, not only does it bring forth good things, but it's health to all their flesh. Amen. It's life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. Health to all. The, it, 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 it's not just so that you can bring out good things, but it's health. Amen. Listen, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. So I want to leave you with this thought tonight as I bring this to a close. I want to leave you with this thought. What have you been bringing forth? What's going on around you? Because what's going on around you isn't always determined by what people are doing, but by, but by what you're bringing forth within you, from within you. 
Let me say that again. Not all the time, but a lot of times we want to look at what's going on around us, and there's things that I know that we have no control of. But what you do have control of is what you allow to just settle in your heart. And so you may not have control over the elections and over the, the, the pandemic and, and over how crazy people acted and how people crazy people are not acting. You may have absolutely no control over that, but you have control over how it affects your heart. And remember, if you allow it to affect your heart, if you allow all this craziness to affect your heart, it won't be long before you start bringing crazy things forth from your heart. I refuse to be a part of it. I refuse to, to take part in it. So I have to refuse, listen, to let it affect my heart. Why? Because I want to continue bringing forth good fruit. I want to continue bringing forth health. I want to be continue bringing forth joy. I want to continue bringing forth love. I want to continue bringing forth peace. Amen? Remember, guard your heart. Amen? Keep God's word in there. Let his word not depart from the eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Keep them, guard them. Guard them like precious, like a precious treasure. Guard it and, and, and don't let anybody take your joy. Don't let anybody take your, 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 your love. Don't let anybody take your peace. Guard it. Because if you guard it, if you guard the good things, if you guard God's word, and you guard God's word in the midst of your heart, I promise it's going to flourish and it's going to bring forth life. And the God's word says, and it will, it will be flat to all, all, all their body. Amen? That's all I have for you tonight. I don't know about you, but it preached me happy. You, you say, you know, uh, honestly, folks, this is not a new message. It's a message... But it's like, I, it's like I've said, just because you hear a message once and you know it, you may know this, these scriptures by heart. But a lot of times it's, it's a new revelation. And I'm not saying it's, 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 you know, you learned something new. I'm saying it's a new revelation. It's a fresh revelation. Let me say it. Let me say it again. Not so much a new revelation. It's a fresh revelation. It's something that, was, that was, I was reminded of in my spirit. And it becomes a fresh revelation. You know, it's a revelation that we've had, but it refreshes that revelation and brings it alive again. Amen? Hallelujah. I thank you for joining me today on Wednesday night service. You know, I love you. I thank you for being here, and I thank you. Listen, if you're watching it on Facebook, which you have to be if you, if you got it, you know, you know, share it with somebody. Because I believe these type of messages... At this time of, of, of a day and time, I should say, um, or time in this world, we need these type of messages. You can walk in love. I have decided that I'm going to walk in love no matter what. God bless you. I love you. Let's pray out. Father, we thank you for your word. We know that it will not return void, but do what you have intended for it to do. I thank you, Father, for your loving kindness. I thank you for your word that is hid in the midst of my heart and that will spring forth in health and prosperity, joy, love, and peace. Father, that I, might, that I might overwhelm those that come close to me, Father, with it, Father. Lord, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.